You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pippigator? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I'm excited. We got, uh, this is a special show, man. How you doing, Harry? You good? You know I'm good, Dante. I don't even know why you would ask me something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little disrespectful yeah, sometimes. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I'll let it slide, but man, you know. I, I, I feel you. I feel you. Gotta you. get your stuff together. Where's Andre? Andre is somewhere being Andre, so that that could be any. I mean, he might be doing a a, a big titty contest somewhere. That's I don't know. True. Who or, knows? Or but, either smoking weed or lifting something or, very or heavy, doing, or doing pull ups. I don't there know. So whatever. Um, we got a special guest in the building today. Um, this dude's a relationship uh expert and a fetish uh, trainer and adult, uh, film, adult star. film star. Give it up for King Noir, y'all. Give it up for King Noir. Ah. Clap it up. <laughs> What's up, King? How you doing, bro? Good, good. Do you prefer King or do you prefer Noir? All right. I mean, you know, I mean, well, let's just all call ourselves King right now with this Black Lives Matter shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, Carrie, you got to be a prince, though, because you're not all, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Damn. <laughs> you, I guess I'll take it. Because <laughs> you look like your arms dealer at the at the docks. So. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Just because I'm only half Latino, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm in. I'm still in. I'm still You're supporting. In, uh, Noah, he King, he's the fucking he's the double agent. Dre, what up, dude? Yeah. Oh shit! It's two of y'all on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> it's the same dude in two boxes. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, you look like triplets, nigga. You look dumb as shit. <laughs> I Yo, just want to like, start a band, nigga. <laughs> I look, I look like my camera has a, uh, uh, my camera has a funhouse mirror on it, and uh, and uh, and and Harry looks like our shitty agent. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Listen, fellas, it's the Yo. county fair today, but I mean, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> now get out there and do oh, those sick shit. Nice dance right. move. <laughs> King, Bro. I'm, a, I'm just mad because King can't get the steps right. <laughs> get the fucking <laughs> dance steps right, King. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Well, I, I love you there, King. I, we you lost you, King. Something. King, are you muted? Oh, uh, shit. Here we oh, go. Oh, boy. We lost him with the yeah, earbuds. Damn, son. I'm telling mom. Fucking up the fun. <laughs> you always snitching. I'm snitching on this him. That's why son. we don't ever take you no place. <laughs> oh, shit. Now I can hear you, King. Uh, okay, okay. I don't be yeah. fucking up the steps, man. I'm always on point. I'm always <laughs> on point. I'm talking about the spin. You know the five, six, seven spin. You keep missing the spin. As a look like one on one standing next to each other. That's yeah. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt. Um, dope to have you, bro. Um, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, how long you been doing uh doing adult film. I've uh, been doing adult film in the mainstream for about like seven years, but also you know 
a lot of independent stuff and I started working within the industry off and on for like 15, 20 years now. You know, I've been I've been in it, but mostly yeah. off camera. <laughs> well, I mean, haven't we all? Let's be honest. <laughs> haven't we all? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about when you say off camera, what do you mean off camera? Producing stuff, working in, in or, or what? I, I do like, like a lot of uh, 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 live sex shows, private fetish training and clients and things like that. So like if you ever been to a sex club and someone else is there fucking better than you, that's probably me. Uh, fair go. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um... You know, I, 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 you know, I've done, you know, I was a male stripper for a while. I've done a couple of live sex acts, but you know, I never really Damn. got all the way in. Uh, what, Dre? What? Because I'm the only light skinned bald head nigga here that didn't do no sex acts, nigga. I'm the only <laughs> one that fucked up. The, I fucked up three's company, nigga. I'm the only one out here having this regular is, basic cable sex, nigga. This is, this is the. This I ain't is doing the, nothing premium channel, nigga. I'm this, trash. This is the. <laughs> this is the Sesame Street. One of these things <laughs> is not like the other. And everybody would go, Harry, Harry, nah, right? Nah. And they go, no. <laughs> Harry got. Tie wraps in his fucking bag right now, you piece of shit. I, yeah. I do. I do. I mean, you know, they're oh, handy. Shit. It's quick. It's fun. <laughs> it's clean, disposable, recyclable. You know, recyclable. I care about the uh, environment. You a green Your ties are green. great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all my friends are dirt bags, and uh, and then I, I always <laughs> complain about it, and then I go, uh. Water seeks, water seeks its own level, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> there was a time I remember once years ago. You were with a girl. You were doing a little bit of dirty stuff. You're like a couple of years ago. <laughs> the statute, Thanks, Harry. Well, Thanks the statute for of limitations. <laughs> you know, we got to make sure the statute of limitations is run out. I don't know, what is time? What is time yeah, yeah. anyway? Right? Yeah, but <laughs> there was a time uh, you were you were going back into doing some dirty uh, BDSM stuff. You go. I was thinking of buying a paddle, and I go, you don't have a paddle? He goes, you know what, I probably, let me see if I still have one. And then he called me up the next day. I go, did you find a paddle? He goes, I found, found three it. of them. <laughs> Gotta have different sides. Am I right, King? Yeah, around. <laughs> say it again, say it again, you broke, you broke it. A good paddle stay around, man. You gotta keep it. <laughs> Especially if you buy quality shit. It don't go nowhere. You know what I mean? I got a pair of alligator shoes, 20 years old. Cost me 2400 to get them. Still got them. I had them resold and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you get good stuff. Are you, you saying always... that's what you used to spank a woman's ass is the alligator shoes? That's rough, bro. I have hit a bitch with a shoe before, <laughs> it's a yes. strong bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, King, let me ask you something. So, the, um, how did you get into it? Was it just, you know, pretty, pretty yellow nigga? Got bitches and just, <laughs> just <laughs> you was like, this fits. Actually, um, when I turned 18, I had a homegirl. She was a dancer um, out in Philly, and they asked her to be in a magazine. Uh -huh. so every sex story starts in Philly. So, me and her, we already had messed around. She was like, yo, I know what you into. I know what you're working with. Come get this money. So right. it, those kind of situations. She didn't want to work with some stranger. You know, so she she hollered at me, and that's kind of like what set me off in it. Because like for that magazine, then I started getting private clients and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what was the magazine? You remember the magazine? I have no idea. No, no, no idea. It might have just wound up in that person's private stash for all I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was what mattered to me. It was like at a at a time when I wasn't thinking about building up no credits. I just needed bread. So it was yeah. just like, I right, I'm in. I'm out. How how old are you, bro? If you don't mind me asking. No. Say again. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Okay. Yeah, I'm a I'm an old nigga. So, <laughs> like, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember Black Tail. Yeah, I remember Black Tail back in the day. Yeah. So so uh, I was I was supposed to do a I I don't know if you'll notice, but I was supposed to do a layout with Dynamite. There was a stripper named Dynamite. She used to take a fist in the ass and walk around. In the shot, <laughs> is that what she did and shouted dynamite when she did it? <laughs> that's, that's a rough a fist in the ass. Now that's the show I want to see. Yeah. And, and then, then she, she got a cease and desist from good times. I hope she do the clap. If she don't do the clap when she the do JJ it. JJ Walker. And, and dynamite, King, you know, uh, Lady, Lady used to used to rep her for that's a while. Funny. 
And okay. uh, and I remember she she came out of retirement to do this bachelor party, and she you know she used to shoot the the the, the ping pong balls, and uh, and uh, and she said, Lanny, you know I'm old now. She goes, I I got to use boiled eggs. I need something with a little weight on it. <laughs> Yo. I like that she came out of retirement like Jordan coming back <laughs> right? from like the minor league baseball. <laughs> Yo, because her 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 jersey was up in the rafters. Absolutely, it was up in the her rafters. Her jersey was wet. Yeah, it was sticky, <laughs> moist. Um, yeah, I, so you know, I I did that for ten years, and that kind of that kind of helped me kind of do because I do relationship counseling and all kinds of stuff, and um, so I'm I'm wondering uh, if that was your same was that your same kind of path because understanding, you know. It, <laughs> You got to kind of understand the mentality of women to do this. It's, I mean, to be a good lover, you have to be able to have the empathy, empathy to deconstruct and to see the content. You got to be able to see people in their true selves and be able to bring out who they are. Do you, do you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, let me let you. She's saying, I think um, also you just are around so many different people. You know, you're around so many different relationships because I because like I didn't just jump like full on into mainstream porn. So I was still, you know, like I used to get hired at like sex clubs to do performances or just like hang out. And shit, you know what I'm saying so you talk to people. I, I, used to, I used to dance at clubs too. Like you talk to people and you get, you start to see what brings them to the spot or what brings a couple to the spot. Why they're looking to open their relationship. And sometimes you start to see like, nah, that's a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should go yeah. Out be here. Yeah. And you know, um, my partner, Justin and Jasmine is actually uh, a licensed, um, licensed therapist and she's got degrees and you know, like is what she do, you know, from yeah. allergy all over. So people start asking us both questions, you know, and she comes from the clinical aspect of things. And I come from the super random experiences kind of things, you know? Well, you know, it's it's a funny thing because a lot of dudes will, will, will hit me up and, 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 you know, and a lot of them will go to sex therapists and people with the degrees, but the, the, what I find is that the, the sheer, um, I guess the, the, the case study, I mean, my own, my personal life is a case study. And so, and I mean, I know dudes, I know dudes that was wilder than me back in the days and they, you know, their body count was even worse than mine, but they never were people who tried to really tried to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like there's certain dudes that, especially when it comes to women, there's certain dudes that just had a knack, you know, just that like were born with that kind of knack. Uh, to to get chicks, and they never really delved into it to understand what what was the dynamics of working. You know what I mean? But I, I had a wide a wide uh, cross section of different types of women, different relationships, and so what happens is you start to see you start to see the patterns. Do you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I think a lot of times too, um, men search for sex with negative intentions and then when they wind up in bad situations in relationships it's kind of like yo you reap what you sow yeah and same kind of go thing goes for pleasing a lover you know if you actually care to please somebody it's going to be great for everybody involved exactly nobody you know maybe you get a night here or whatever but there's there's going to be no connection it's not going to last it's not going to mean nothing and not saying everything has to devolve into marriage and shit no. but a sense of like Somebody who would hi who would call you, knowing that you down on your luck, like yo, I know you could throw that dick, come through, come get this money, you know, <laughs> like shit. She never would have hollered at me, you know what I'm saying? So right, right, right. Like in that kind of aspect, you know, if there's a whole way to do this, um, even if you are the most freakiest, kinkiest, BDSM type of person, but you can still have respect, you can still be an honorable person, and still engage in all this and that's when people will actually reach out to you and ask a question like how do i do that how can mm -hmm. I a boyfriend lover husband whatever or or how can I better to my boyfriend lover or husband yeah well i mean you know the 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 the, the, the show is man school 202 the three principles that we ascribe to is is it's is, is an acronym we call ace which is authenticity credibility and empathy and so 
authenticity is being truthful is what you're saying. Credibility is be a man, say what you mean, mean what you say, and do what you say. And then have the empathy to understand what the person that you're dealing with and how they, how, what, what perspective they're coming from in the, in the context of, of, of whatever we, you know, whatever's going on. So it's like, you know, I, I'd say this to dudes all the time. If, you know, if you are a, a polyamorous dude and you want, you, you, you're not a monogamous dude and you want multiple women, everybody's not going to go for that, but some people are going to go for that, but you have to bring something to the table for me. You know what I'm saying? It, because you're, here's my, here's the contract. If you're not giving anything in the contract, um, why would somebody, why would somebody sign up? You feel what I mean? I, th I think also people need to realize just because you want to fuck a lot of different people doesn't make you polyamorous. You know, no, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, polyamorous. Polyamorous in, in its root word, poly is many and amory is love. Is love, yeah, right. Can't just be the dude that's like, yeah, I want to have all the women in a polyamorous relationship, and if any of those women want to go sleep with another man or another woman, you get jealous, you know. Yeah, well, that's you know that's what you call uh, what you, uh soft swinging. <laughs> it's those kind of situations, and if it is what you're looking for, no matter what, you know, like I got a homeboy, like we like brothers. And he's the most monogamous person I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not interested. He, he'd be like blinders on type. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That enjoys. And I think that for everybody, you know, human, human love and, and how we ha relate to one another, it varies from person to person. So just be honest about who you are. Be upfront because you don't want to waste your time with somebody that ain't trying to get down how you get down anyway. Yeah. I, I um, Harry, do me yeah. a favor. Can you bring up... Uh, I want you to bring up on YouTube, there's a, the IKEA commercial, because um, I've been talking about, I talk about this commercial all the time. The IKEA commercial uh, goes, start the car, IKEA commercial. So it, it's a funny thing because a lot of times I use this, this as, a, as, a, as a learning tool to understand the dynamics of value and, and bringing something at the table. Um, because it's, it's what you find more over than not is people want things, people are dishonest because they want to be in the context of a, of a, of a, a conversation or a discussion that they don't think that they're, they, they don't think that they deserve to be in that, in that, in that conversation. So they're being deceptive because <laughs> they don't really think they should be in that in the first place. And so one of the things, you know, when, you, when you're, you know, being the best version of yourself and, you, and you're working on that on a day-to-day -day basis, you put forth an energy because when you meet a woman, she doesn't, she doesn't know you. She doesn't know you. How does she get to know you? You tell her. You tell her in body language, in, in context, in the tone of your voice, in the cadence of your voice, in your own personal confidence, and that permeates everything that you do. And um, you got it? All right, this, yeah. is the, this is the thing that I've been talking about uh, for a while. Good. We can only show so much of it in and out. It's only it's a few seconds. Just well, you know. All right. So the the point of that is she's in a situation where she gets the the, the, the prices are so cheap that she's like, start the car. She looks at the receipt and she's like, I'm I'm get I'm 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 getting the best of the bargain. And so a lot of times I'll get dudes and they'll call me and I'm like, yo, I met this girl and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, how what how long should I take before I call her back? And she texts me this. What should I and I go the problem is that not the, 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 the intricacies of what you're texting. It's the fact that you don't believe that you should be in this game in the first place. And so you're calling me, somebody who has more of an expertise, to give you the trick to, to make the difference. Um, if you think, if you think that you have paid, you know, I mean, we all have done this going someplace Well, we've all gone to some place and bought a pair of shoes for 2,800, right? We've all done that, ah. right? <laughs> but, but when you, when you buy a pair of shoes for 2,800 and the dude goes, yo, you want a coffee or tea? Yeah, motherfucker, give me a coffee, a tea. Don't, I'm, everything you got, I want because you know that you're spending money. It's when you're in these relationships where you feel that you're the, you're, you are, 
getting the best of the bargain because you're not your best self is why you tell it, why you scream and start the call. Let's get the fuck out of here before I'm exposed. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I think also a lot of times people, when they get into relationships or they're in that conversation with a woman, they're thinking about what they can get out of it, not what they have to share. Sure. You know? So it's like, I, I got to say this right thing so she'll do exactly what I want her to do right. instead of, you know, if I'm me, I'm natural and it is what it is, like, she'll just do, we'll do that shit together and, and we'll both enjoy it together. But a lot of times people have that, what can I get? You know what I'm saying? So they wind right. up in the store like that lady. They think, you know, it got over. Right, right, right. And that's what dudes are doing. They're like, yo, what can I, how can I, how can I get this hustle? But, you know, relationships, any social situation, if it's, if it's a hustle for you, then there's always you. Uh, there's always a situation where you can get the somebody's gonna get the best of the hustle. But if I go, yo, this is what this is worth. This is what I'm worth, and this is what I need because I'm worth this. Then there's no, you know, there's no discrepancy about that. Now you may you you you'll also be surprised at what you what people will put up with or will accept or like when you put those parameters out there. So you'd be surprised what girls will go, okay, I'll give that a try. Or what girl after the fact, you know, even if they, I've had girls change their mind and go, I kind of want to be with you alone now. And I go, well, that wasn't the deal. If you want to go, no worries, go ahead. And then the second you give them like the release, all of a sudden they go, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I don't want to lose everything. All right. I'll, you know what? I changed my mind. I'll go back. I'm happy with this. Like it's a human nature thing, you know, like people want, sometimes what they can't have. And if you throw out the parameters, when people accept it, it's a good thing. It's an honest thing as opposed to just trying to scam your way through it and then getting caught. And then nobody's happy in that situation. You know, there are women who will leave when you say like, I, I want to, I don't want to be monogamous. And they go, well, I'm, I want to be monogamous. They go, that's cool. But the women who stay, that's an amazing thing that you have. It's a good system. Well, King, King, you know, it's like, I'm quite sure, you know, you've had, chicks who you you were you know might have been i mean i don't know how long you've been with your lady or whatever but i'm quite sure you've been with women who who have said you know like what it is and just said look i i just i like you too much i can't deal with the fact that you're a point you're in porn you're in adult films and and that's okay um especially if you are rooted in the fact that this is what you're doing and that you're confident about doing it as opposed to as if, you know, you don't want your, like I say this, and this is just not just porn, but any business, you don't want your business to be a side bitch. You know, you don't want to feel like because who you are, you're trying to hide it from your, your joint. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, we see that with comedy a lot of times doing stand up comedy. You know, yo, I'm gonna, I gotta go do a show, and then she go, oh, you going out again? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take off Monday, but I, I, I'm a, nah, yo, I gotta do. This is what I'm doing. This is who I am. You know? Yeah. Uh, at the time, I don't want to be safe. You show with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cole. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I've been. I've been in some form of adult entertainment for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to change. Right, and right. If I wasn't on the camera, I'll still probably be, you know, producing, directing, writing, mm -hmm. and, and How much still writing go into porn? What's up? How much writing goes into porn? It really depends on the, depends on the scene. Depends the on genre? Yeah. Because, you know, we've done, we've done certain, certain scenes where we're writing out, you know, every shot and... I don't like to write dialogue for people too much because yeah, it's, it's unreal in our business that, that, you know, they can improvise really well, but they're not going to memorize the lines. You so know it's me? more like a storyboard type of thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when we present, when, when my company presents to, let's say uh, another company hires us out to do some scenes for them or something like that, we're going to storyboard it, show y'all what y'all got. Cause if you put in money into it, you should know what you're paying for, you know? Yeah. Like, just like any other business, we we treat it a hundred percent, you know. So yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I feel what you're saying though, because it's like when you are your business, whether yeah. it's comedy, porn, music, you know, you run a bagel shop. If you yeah. are your business, you have to put an extreme amount of time into it. Yeah. You know, you work twenty four seven. You don't work nine to five. Yeah. yeah. So 
you if somebody's not on board with your vision and they're holding you back from making your money, that's a very unsexy quality to have in a partner. <laughs> like I ain't trying to yeah. no more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and then the thing is I you know, I used to say this, you know, back in the day, I used to say, uh, you know, a, a woman falls in love with you for everything that you are. She spends the rest of the relationship trying to change you into everything that you're not. And if she succeeds, she'll dump you for the guy who is what you were in the first place. You know, it's it's a it's they hate you for what you are, uh, and they love you for what you are. And that that's you know, when you when you start to see that and 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 you're you know, your weakness to bend uh, because of somebody's pressure, social pressure or otherwise, shows weakness. Even if they benefit from your weakness, because now you go, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do porn no more. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. And then what, but what, what you really said is you've made a statement about who you are as a person. You're a person that has no conviction. It's a person that has no no credibility. So you said this is who you are, and now you bend in it. Even if I'm, I ben, even if she benefits from me bending it, all you are is a punk ass dude who bends his bends his credibility. I don't. I don't think that that's a quality that's just reserved to women. I think there are men. No, I I, I agree. Women constantly, um, but I also think any relationship that you have, y'all should add on to one another. You know, like if there's a certain area or field that you're a three and she's a seven, then y'all tend together and vice versa. You know, um, I don't think, I, I, I always say, you know, you can't love somebody for who that you want them to be. You can't love somebody for who they were. You can only love them for who they are. And we constantly evolve as humans. And within a relationship, you should be evolving too. Like you should be a better person, a better lover, a better friend, a better confidant than mm-hmm. you first met. You know, yeah. I think, you know, people who try to change people is because they're not happy with themselves. Absolutely. The kind of shit that ruins a relationship from start anyway. But yeah, I think a lot of people out there, they have ideas of what they want in a partner, but they haven't even figured out who they are yet. So sure, sure. They just rushing into shit and they they mess it all up along the way. I also think it's a lot of it's a lot of dishonesty. There's a lot of dishonesty. Is there's dishonesty about what you really want? See, if you're not if you're not really authentic, if you're not truthful about what you want, then you have there's all this you you've you've clouded the whole the you've clouded the direction. If you're moving in the direction, if you first of all, I think you have to figure out what you what if you're if you're trying to find happiness what the dis- destination for your happiness is. You got to be honest about that. And being honest about it is a lot of times it's the hardest thing. You know, um, it, it's, uh, you know, there's jealousy, there's insecurity, there's, and, and I think, you know, with, with a lot of squares, the jealousy and it's, it, insecurity is becomes, becomes, um, it's sort of like a, a it, it's it has a lot to do with sex and 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 that kind of intimacy and and you know uh, just want to control. But I think the same like we've we've interviewed a lot of porn stars and they a, a lot of them are. I mean, and I guess it's not just porn stars. It's just grossly insecure, you know, grossly insecure about who they are as people, and they really haven't done that work. Um, and, and you know, like they, they also, a lot of times haven't made a decision to do this business. A lot of times just kind of fell into it. And then. I think for, for me, it's very different because when I, when I first started in the industry, I was in that place where I was like, yo, I need to. Need some bread. Over my head. I need to. Yeah. You no. Know? Um, but then I left the business for a while, started doing music full time, started touring. And mm. then. And um, I started working in my neighborhood in Jersey City. I started working, teaching chess and creative. Mm. Writing. So it's like you can't do that in porn at the same time. It don't match. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but, but my program was cut. I got back into the industry. And how we started Royal Fetish Films, uh, Jasmine and I, was because we were doing parties for primarily black women between the ages of 25 and 45. Mm. And, couples. and people would just kind of ask us, yo, why is black porn so fucking trash? Yeah. Why, why is there no 
romance, no love, no kissing. Why do we, why is there no lotion? Why is why is it just as a whole? Like no, lotion. no lotion. Yeah, I and caught that. Lotion. No ah. lotion. You're like, need lotion. <laughs> can we get a makeup guy? They need makeup <laughs> too. This is ashy. Yeah. <laughs> Saying like it's it's funny. Like when you think about it, you know, it, and, and within our industry, that is a woman complaint. There's like with with all aspects of American life, there's there's racism involved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was on, just talking about that. If you get on the set, titles. there's a makeup artist or your hairstylist who doesn't know how to make you look good and make you feel good. You're not going to be performing at your best. You're like, damn, I don't know if this sewing going to show or whatever the fuck. Or if you're there and the director or the or the lighting people don't know how to light your skin, you know, we some light skinned brothers. They might try to disappear us in the sheets or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's important. It's, we were like, we're gonna start making our own shit that's gonna highlight our beauty, highlight the depth, and you know, all the other shit that they make, and it's always some type anyway. So we're gonna Nigger go, bitch gets fucked in the hallway. It's like Jesus exactly. Christ. That shit. <laughs> hey man, that was a good flip. That was a good flick, bro. I mean, that was entertaining. Oh, for no, her was. name be Cinnamon Love, and they rather call a nigga bitch. Say Cinnamon. It's way more fun. Thanks for that, Dre. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> sir. I'm here anytime. We but the reality, the, the reality <laughs> is that's the same thing that they did in mainstream films in the history of mainstream films that they they didn't. Uh, they completely ignored the black audience and it was black exploitation movies and there was limited yeah, that's what roles they did with McDonald's commercials and then all of a sudden Mc ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Pop McDonald's and eh, eh, McMuffin that needs to break, back niggas break dancing and all like hand. come on dog like we we we're people but you know the the funny thing I think about that I was gonna talk about the the racism. I know what what um what we don't understand is and, and I've been talking a lot about this is that um, you know, with you talk about the BLM and you talk about the racism and porn and so on and so forth. What we're really going against is that the history of this country, right, for hundreds of years have basically said that black people are beasts, that we are genetically inferior, that we are, that our sex drives are, are that we don't feel pain, that, I mean, these are, like, I, I do a lot of heavy reading, like, you know, uh, like American history, and when you talk about the the images in order to demean and dehumanize black people, in order to, 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 to you know, we just had this, this Breonna Taylor thing, the the you know the the where where oh, all they got was a reckless endangerment and the the intricacies of the Brianna Taylor thing is really interesting because the 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 the, the guilty charge of reckless endangerment was because of the bullets that went out of the apartment. So if the, those who don't know Brianna Taylor, the cops came in with a no walk. I'm good. I, I I'm sorry, bro. Say that again, King. Even into the white neighbor's apartment. Exactly. That the point is that the, the 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 question was not the fact that these cops came in and put the bullets in this black woman. The reckless endangerment, the reason why they got convicted was because it was bullets that went into white people. Like, we, 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 we don't mind that you killed this black woman who was in her own home. What we do mind is that you were so reckless that you had bullets that went out in her body, that's fine, but the ones that went out into the neighbors and you might have hit some white woman or, or some white man, that was the real problem. And so what, what they're saying, it's like when you hear people say all lives matter, you like suck my dick. Like you're saying that this woman, her death doesn't matter. What matters is the bullets, the reckless bullets that with the stray bullets that went the other way. And 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 so when you when you but when you read it historically historically we're talking about black people have been it's been said that black people are genetically inferior that was the science of the day and the science of the day back up the culture that that said that so so you know I was just listening to um Dame Dash did a uh, Instagram and he was talking about people were saying that I'm crazy because I don't want, I don't want you talking to me crazy 
when I'm a grown ass man, I'm, I, I want you to respect me like I respect you. And because of that, somehow I'm crazy. I'm burning bridges. And I'm so it's it's in, in the I know in porn for a while. It was that if you if you had did sex with a black dude, I think there was wasn't there a stigma against that at some period of time, or, or is there still a stigma? I mean, I'm sure amongst some circles, there's definitely still a stigma. If you look at some of the comments, if you read the comments anywhere, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. A lot of wild shit. But um, there was for a while, there are still some people who might do this, but white women would charge more if they were sleeping with a black man on camera. So <laughs> be same size as the, as the white guy or the white guy could be bigger, but she charging more to be with the black guy because of the stigma of, of being black, right? Right. You know, like even more to, to build off of that, you know, there, if you just, um, you brought up the history of American cinema, you know, the first ever major film in America was Birth of a Nation. And that was white dudes in blackface uh, pretending. Raping, to, raping white women. You know what I'm saying? So this has been something in film that we are, these negative stereotypes have been played out and perpetuated. So, you know, when you get up to where porn has become more mainstream, you just see it even more extreme than you see it on regular film because they don't have that storyline to make you be afraid of the black guy for something else. They just right. start it off from the beginning where they're going to have that racist ass title like, like brother just said, you know. So, you know, we're working to try and change that. And it's, it's, it's what's up? You mentioned, you mentioned the sister Cinnamon Love. Cinnamon Love, uh, Jess Sitting Jasmine and I, along with a lot of amazing people, um, are working with the BIPOC Collective, which is the Black and Indigenous people of color that are in the adult entertainment industry to try and change this racist shit. You know what I'm saying? Because there's wow. nothing wrong with being adults and enjoying adult things and being entertained by it, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you should be able to not have to do with racism. You should not be have able to what? Get one more, give us that one more time. You know what, King? No, I was saying you should be able to avoid racism when you're trying to bust a nut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> then, then we're trying to yeah. Yeah, but if you can't if you can't avoid it in your own home or walking or driving, then it ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? It, it especially is not gonna happen when you when you're busting a nut. Now, King, you and your uh, you and your lady, you you're doing a lot of initiatives together. This is part of it, but there's also a little bit of um, tutelage you're providing for couples and stuff. Tell us a little bit about that and how that started and and how how uh, involved you are with that. Uh, with that, we started uh, doing fantasy flight parties maybe, I don't know, like seven or eight years ago now. And they've kind of like grew into kinky pop-ups, you know, that kind of like can't escape the conversation. Just as you said, you know, uh, a lot of black folk have a lot of negative opinions and ideas in regards to kinky shit and BDSM. Like, oh, that's some white people shit. But we're trying to teach people the history of it because pretty much like everything else that has existed we started you know so like if you think you know sexy kings have existed for millions of years but they didn't start spanking each other on the ass until you, were, you have you know a misguided idea of what history is and what sex is so we're trying to decolonize people's ideas around sex we're trying to show that if you look through the history of of the continent if you look through the history of africa there was bdsm there was polyamory. There was Wait, now, same now sex. when you said it was BDSM in in and Africa, and I, I'm sorry to me, but um, is there there's there's historical <laughs> references to that and and like absolutely. Um, when actually we were in Kenya last year, and when we were doing this one performance in Kenya, um, the sister showed us what was kind of like a flogger that was made out of um basically like animal hair and they like, had yeah, horse hair and shit. Yeah. And yeah. things date back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And mm -hmm. some people might've used it to with their, their goats. Some people might've used it with their kids to keep right. them. But a lot of people, they also used it during sex and it was a way that people had flirtatious behavior or they used it in the bedroom. Um, I was actually in Curacao as well last year. And there's a museum about, uh, basically the African diaspora. And they had all these um, like wooden dildos and paddles and shit. And it was just like, ah, I knew, I knew it came from somewhere, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like seeing the pyramids for the first time. 
and they still haven't been able to duplicate them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, my people are so dope, man. And uh, and half of Harry is dope. That's fine. So that's fine. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. It, I mean, it's 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 interesting to to think about, you know, the the this this the suppression of this, the suppression of, you know, when you talk about, you know, them shooting the noses off of pyramids and 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 uh, you know, Ivan Van Sertima, they came before Columbus and proof that that Africans have been on this content be- continent before Columbus and and so on and so forth, and and what you find is this suppression of this of of true history so so you, you find that this is this this movement to 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 suppress knowledge so that you can you can dehumanize people of color and what's interesting to me is that even in the in the context even in the context of just of 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 porn which you would think is is so basic and primitive and so visceral, fundamental that you 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 would think that people would be able to get naked and not, but but it, it's it's probably even more so because you are naked, you know. Well, I mean, and there's also like this level of uh, the stereotypes that they've used to dehumanize us, and you Absolutely. you brought up one of them, you know, yeah. um, have this sex drive. They they needed to tell people we had this other worldly sex drive because they were literally forced to breed on plantations right you know um when they would buy us they would see a, they would have us naked and they would select men with penises that they felt was the ones that was gonna be the best to make babies and the same well, thing it's also was a, a situation to 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 dehumanize and say that there it's it's this way of of perceiving black men as this bestiality this bestial kind of presence where he had no control over he he needed dominion over him because his sex drive was so strong that he needed to be controlled and 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 demeaned and whipped and 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 buck buck broke and all those things to, to to keep you know that it's it's so you know What's crazy to me is we are still talking about these things now. Do you know what I mean? Like the present, the present doesn't exist in a vacuum. It comes from a place. And sure. the reason that they, they also were saying our sex drive was this and that was because they were out there raping everybody. Yeah, sure. Raping black, sure. raping black men who were raping black children. And that was part of their, uh, part of what they felt was their right or, you know, that manifest destiny on people, not just on land, right? Yeah. And we're dealing with it still to this day because the shit don't get checked. Yeah. You know, porn is that one industry still where you can be like, I don't want to work with any black people today. And nobody there will say, hey, that's racist or you should be fired from your job. Oh, that was, they would say that in, in, in at a porn shoot. If you look, if you look at porn, there are certain sites that have no people of color on it at all. Black, brown, you know, any, anything, you know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying? because they're literally saying, I don't want to work with black bodies. You know what I'm saying? Or it'll be today. Our company is shooting the, you know, black ass series. So we're going to get all these black women for this one, this one shoot. And that's it. And for the rest of the year, we're not going to shoot any more black people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You can't do that with no other job. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. You can't you can't be at Barnes and Noble and say, I'm not giving books to black people today. You know yeah. what I mean? It it it, it literally I has, mean you could do it with jobs though. You could do it with jobs. <laughs> you could do it with houses too, apparently. <laughs> and yeah. then benefits, you can do it with benefits, loans, and you, you, can't, you can do you it. You can't do it right now, but you know what? Uh, I gotta push against you, King. You can do it in everything. They do it, they do it, it in everything. You just can't but say in the it opposite out. direction. Well, I mean, you can even say it now. I mean, it's it's this shit is you know up is down and down is up, and they you know it, they're they're wow. not even trying to hide it Wait anymore. Wait till we so. replace that Supreme Court judge. There's gonna be a lot more of that. So, I, I mean, even with the this, with, with with the Supreme Court, here's a, you know, and, and and my boys will tell you, I'm, like I'm crazy about the politics and the um, history. I'm a real history buff, and um, but. Some of the one of the things that when you go deeper in the, in the context of history, right? Um, none of the, like you said, the history comes from someplace, but none of this is new. None of it is new. Not only is it not new, but it was worse. I mean, it's better now than it's ever been. Um, 
Uh, and 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 the fact that you even have a you're even having a conversation about this you couldn't even have a conversation about this i mean it was a time when man black man could be murdered and it was just fine it was just that's just what you did you could rape a black woman and it was no consequences the pushback on you they still doing it now too yeah 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 now they film it now they film it i'm really interested in what's going to happen with Ahmad um Ahmad Avery's case yeah but i mean I remember, I remember coming up, you know, and police shootings was happening, but it wasn't camera phones. Yeah. And we were so like, I knew that shit was different because when I was 10 years old, I was living in New Jersey. Philip Pinnell got killed by the police in Teaneck, New Jersey. Right. And people in other places, you'd be telling them like, yo, this is the police fuck us up. They beat us up. This I mean, nah, come on, son. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? And now it's on camera and they still telling you that they're that the shit isn't happening yeah, yeah. it's I, I always say that ra- racism to a to a, to a white dude is is like a, a a period is to a dude like you think it happens but you don't really think it's that bad come on now you know <laughs> like it ain't it ain't that bad so um it, it's it's you know it, this is a really interesting kind of topic that you're fighting we're fighting from the, you know, so, so I've, I've heard people go like, oh, fuck this marching, fuck this, fuck, you know, we need to get out in the streets and people need to go, other motherfuckers are like, we need to create the militia, we need to do this. And the reality of it is that it, 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 this is interesting to me because you're giving me a perspective on this that I would have never, I mean, I knew that they, that, you know, they, certain porn stars were charged more for black men and, and this, that, but there's also this kind of thing that I wanted to, if you could touch on this fetish, fetishization of black bodies too. And how does that, which is, which is, yeah, which is also kind of like the NBA in a sense, because there was a time when, you know, you had Jenna Jameson and people knew these white women who were the stars. And now what's, what's interesting is the fetishization of, of, uh, of, 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 of black pornography, pornog- porn, um, adult film stars is almost it's almost like the guys are the like you, you they, they're the ones on the baseball cards now do you know what i mean like they well, it, it, go ahead for sure I, I i mean when it comes to the fetishization of black bodies i mean just think about entertainment in america sure the first ever uh pop music and pop culture in america was minstrelsy yeah. whereas <laughs> face trying to sing our music right no. so it, and as it's moved down the line, our bodies have been fetishized in different ways. Like when you think now of hip hop being the, the the predominant culture in America, at least uh, in regards to music, you know, people have been internalizing the images of black bodies dancing, black bodies, you know, shirt off posture, all the all the shit that people have seen of us, and they want to be us so bad. You know what I'm saying? To fetishize something is like you want to experience it. You want to be part of it. You want basically <laughs> down. It's the kind of it's the kind of shit that every for some reason every white woman porn star thinks that they can twerk now. You know uh, what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not just the porn stars, bro. All these pumpkin spice bitches be trying to twerk. <laughs> every one of them, fam. All these lower long backs is being thrown <laughs> all over the place. It's all over the place, Duh, bro. His, you know, I, was, I said this to somebody the other day. When when you when white girls, they're like when sisters do the, when sisters do like they twerk or something, it, it's a weird thing. It's like it's front to back. I mean, it's side to side, round and round, but it's front to back. When white <laughs> girls, yo, when white girls would twerk, we twerk, they, they, it's always like. <laughs> It always looks like they're trying to shoo a mosquito <laughs> off their body, but without their hands. You it's know like what I mean? Like, wiping, it's like they're wiping, wiping <laughs> lotion on. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, it's just front to back, front to back. So, <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the hair. And the, uh, you're like, dog, it's, that's not cool. It ain't it, yo. I couldn't hear you, King. So repeat again? No, nah, so when you think about what twerking is, twerking goes back in our... In- Africa. Working, but that shit goes back generations upon generations. Yeah. You know, like if you just see classic African dance against dances now, you know, there's so much uh, yeah. woven together, right? 
But it's like, so then the same kind of thing happens with black male bodies. You know, if you think about, just as I was saying earlier, how we would be selected off of a fucking auction block. Yeah. You know, there there is a certain amount of like, that's what you're here for. That's okay. why for a lot of people, they only want to see black male talent with white women. That's why that site blacked, which is racist as fuck. Which, What's, which, which site is this? Blacked. Blacked. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So what is that? Explain to people who don't know. This is hell. Um, black is the site that when it came out, it was only black men with white women, but they would try to get, you know, black men of certain complexion with like as pale as they can make a white woman. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah. Really make it or they would get like really small white women and like all the all the kind of stereotypes that you the fetishization of, of black men. <laughs> really, really fetishized and just the terminology of someone being black. Mm -hmm. It's fuck. Like now she has this. She soiled. She stained. She sullied for the rest of her life. You know what I'm saying? Because she has done this with a black man. So it's. Uh, it's I've seen the black. She is sullied, though. <laughs> the bitches do be sullied. Like it, it. It is. It is like that's. They. I mean, they go in like it is. It is a fetishization of like a gang battle with some little skinny white girl. Um, and it's you know the, the 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 bucks of the industry smashing her everywhere you know um it but that you know even that speaks to the 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 kind of derangedness of of the white male mind do you know what I mean I hate you but I love you you know what I mean I hate you but I want to be you in the well, same context that's the pedagogy of the oppressed you yeah. know the oppressor. <laughs> going to be obsessed with the oppressed because how to say, say that word again for Andre uh, <laughs> Andre that's uh, that's not a type of cheese just so you understand I thought it was a restaurant I was about yeah. to go to the East Village <laughs> it's hard to get a table over there and pedagogy yeah, is yeah, pedagogy. <laughs> don't go on a Saturday without a reservation <laughs> yeah I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt I couldn't I couldn't get but I mean, like, you know, that that whole aspect of like, how did how have you survived this? Yeah. And if black people, we some we don't just make lemonade out of lemons. We make every fucking yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying so it's kind of like, yo, how do y'all do that shit? I want to do that shit, too. Whether it's jazz or hip hop or the way we fuck, the way we dance, you know, our art, everything about it, because we've had the odds stacked against us. And still we find a way to prosper and look dope as fuck while we do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's. I give you. I will. Um. Gonna wrap. But I got. I have a friend of mine, friend of the show. Um. He's a, a, a like an. Uh, I guess you would call it ex experimental jazz. Like he plays tr jazz trumpet, and he talked to me about how. Remember, um, Harry. Remember Jonathan. Jonathan Finlayson. Finlayson. Finlayson yeah. yeah. So he he um. I mean, he does look like he should have a white girlfriend. I am. This is true. <laughs> he wear a lot of scarves. He got a lot, a lot of scarves and horn rim glasses. So <laughs> he, you, you'd only be Anytime partly you see solid. a black man with at least three or four scarves a week. Yeah. It's like my nigga. And don't all know, he, all, he always all got a he always got a sweet the Swedish chick. Always. But um, I mean, he was oh. he was playing he was playing jazz in Sweden, so he was yeah, cleaning yeah. up. I mean, he was. Uh, yeah, he put up the numbers and the, he was the teaching stats. kids in Sweden, so you know he, there's a lot of a lot of moms that got smashed oh, down. But boy. but he he was even telling me, explaining to me that like in New York, above above 14th Street is jazz, uh, as as white white America or white jazz. They've they've anointed um, Winter Marsalis as the the gatekeeper of jazz and so he even i mean he's juilliard trained and everything but it, he basically decides what jazz is and what jazz isn't right and then downtown in the village of new york you have you literally have jazz like this experimental like i went to see my man and it was i i, I went and saw five dudes with xylophones you know what I mean? They, they like five dudes. I, I've seen bands with two drum sets, conga drums, and a saxophone. You know what I mean? Like just really experimental stuff. And and their ability. But, but it's interesting that they would take somebody like a, like a, in um, Lincoln Center because uh, Winton Winton is the curator 
in Lincoln Center. And he decides, so if you're not, if you're not doing what he perceives as, as jazz, it ain't, it ain't, I, I don't know what you call it, you know? Um, it's funny. I met Wynton Marsalis when I was a kid and he tried to tell me that hip hop wasn't music. And I was like, it's all right. I like Brantford better anyway. You know what I'm saying? Cause <laughs> from there on that Buckshot LaFunk shit, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, there's so many, um, Shit, I, I'm a jazz fanatic, man. I got fucking Love Supreme tatted on my arm, man. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. Oh, let's go. Fucks with jazz. Check so. my man out. Check my man out. He does some real experimental stuff, and they've done, they do stuff with, uh, like, uh, uh, Cuban Caribbean rhythms and mix it with classic. It's, he, he's real dope. Um, his name is John, Jonathan Finlay's son. Um, check out his album. He got an album out, too. It's dope. Um, also, uh, uh, pa past guests on the show, you can find it on uh, iTunes. Yeah. All those episodes are up there. Yeah, but it, it was interesting to just go and check him out and see kind of the experimental, which is what we do. And, and if you if 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 Winton is saying that rap ain't music and you listen or, or you gotta do, if you ever Google YouTube talk right, rock him and talk about how he breaks down the, the statistics of how he rock like you like, dog, come on. Or you get uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Robert, not Robert Shapiro. What's the dude? The the, the 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 one that was on Rogan, uh, the little ben Jewish Shapiro? kid Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. He's like he he uh, you get uh, this he he does the the WAP. He he reads the lyrics from WAP. He's wet ass <laughs> pussy, wet ass pussy. <laughs> like he reads it, I, I, and it's like dog, you don't wet wet ass pussy. Um, <laughs> park the big Mack truck in my little garage. <laughs> wet ass pussy. <laughs> wet ass pussy. Yeah, and so it's it's this, this this, and I think that it has a lot to do with the adversity that we go through. And you you like you said, you gotta you gotta make make lemonade out of piss. You know what I'm saying? We we're doing that, uh, and, and and finding these create. And so there's this this cultural thing to move. And I, I mean, I I think it's really dope, man. That that you're, you know, I would never even think to take that um, the the whole racism and and that thing in the context of porn i mean i know it existed but i didn't even think that even because what what i what i realized is that the images and, and and i mean you know van sertima and all these dudes but the imagery did you know that people talk about how we had crazy ass phil there's a fan of the show but phil hunt phil hunt he's out and he was like oh nobody My don't boy. care about nobody don't don't care about uncle ben's and Andrew mama but you don't understand that on on every level on every level, this programming is going on, uh, and I I often say that I grew up. I you know I'm 54, and and I grew up hip hop in the 80s and the 90s. There's no way you could grow up hip hop and not be homophobic. Like the the programming of hip hop in that era makes you home up. Like you you're constantly hearing and seeing these images. You have to do work to not be homophobic. In the, in the context, because the brainwashing is there, man. Yo, dog, I, this was dope, man. I appreciate you coming, man. Um, thank you, man. Thank you. I mean, giving a different perspective. Yeah, I think it's like just to kind of build off what you said, like not even just the negative aspect of things, but when you positive reinforcement. Like if you don't, if you can't find porn that actually respects the beauty of blackness, you're gonna think of yourself as less than. You know, what I'm saying? no matter no matter how much they fetishize you, if you don't see two black people kissing, you're gonna you're gonna want what those guys in black to have. Sure, they're fetishized. You know, what I'm sure, saying? sure, sure. than who you are and what you are. So that's why we try to put out images that show how beautiful and sexy we are. You know, and what's the name of that organization that you said is with with Cinnamon Love and all of them? You could check us out, the BIPOC Collective. And then you could check out uh, me and Jetson and Jasmine, Royal Fetish Films, RoyalFetishXXX.com, and find me on all your social media. Oh, man. Do it. Well, uh, what's the social media tags? Uh, the Real King Noir on Instagram and at King Noir on Twitter and OnlyFans. Dope, dope, man. Yo, thank you, man. It was, this was real dope, man. I, I appreciate you, man. Stay in touch, man. Anytime you're in town, you're welcome to come back and, and, and chop it up. You know, hope you enjoyed yourself, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Dre, talk to me. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Andre D. Thompson, Between Spots Podcast. Hit me up. Yeah, Harry, talk to me. Um, 
You could go to my website, IHateComedy.com. You could check out all my stuff at Harry Turjanian. Uh, but most importantly, check out the YouTube page for Man School 202. Plus, the Patreon is now up and running, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But there's a lot of cool stuff up there. A lot of It's going to be a lot of bonus content. So go up there, sign up if you love supporting the show and you love getting bonus content. That's where we're doing it. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Uh, everything with me, Dante Nero. If you if you go Dante Nero comedian or Dante Nero relationship guru, you can find all my stuff or go to Dante Nero.com. If you want to uh, you want to book a, uh, some time with me, a consultation, just hit me at Dante Nero.com and click on consult. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. If you like what we're doing, man, tell somebody, tell somebody. Don't forget to support the Patreon. It should be up by the time this is up. If not, uh, soon after, support us, man. We've been supporting y'all and getting you motherfuckers laid and <laughs> making you feel better about yourself. Um, support us back, man, so we can keep doing this. Yo, we are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive Producers, Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.